Hello my sexy muffins and welcome back to another video. Now disclaimer to get out of this way, we do not support the creator of Jack Bright in the SCP fandom, Admin Bright. He has been banned from the server and banned from the fandom altogether because of harassing minors. Now, this does not mean we want to follow along and listen to the new character that's going to take take Jack Bright's face place by changing his name and all such of that. Why? Because we love Jack Bright the way he is. You can separate the creator from the creation very easily unless the creation is also not, not safe, such as if Jack Bright was made to be a child abuser or harasser in such terms of adults themes. And Jack Bright is not that. Yes, fiction, he used his fictional character to do that, but Jack Bright is not that as a character. One, because the fandom has grown where people have added to Jack Bright as he is, and that people have created Jack Bright into something more than just a self-insert. So, we are still going with Jack Bright being a character, a full-fledged character, and not just a self-insert. For example, comparing it to the Jesse McCree, Cole Cassidy switch. Now, Jesse McCree was a canon character that already had his thing developed as a mass thing. It wasn't made by the community, and he was named after a predator. And this predator uh, got his was named, had his name as Jesse McCree, so they didn't want that image with that name, so they got rid of it. Obviously. Now it's a little bit tricky with Jack Bright being a little different because we have added to his character in the fandom and made it grow as Jack Bright expanded it from a self-insert to a canon character. That's where it's different. So I think it's a little dumb because it disregards what people have put into the canon character and what the canon character is instead of... It just being a self-insert, so it's a little tricky. But because the people, I have it as this, it's going to stay as this. And I do not disregard this to the victims of his harassment and such. Because I have been a victim of SA as a child from 7 to 9 years old. And have been essayed as an adult in my adult life. So yes, it is not something I say like, oh, just get over it. No, I know these scars hurt. And yes, but it's a very complicated situation. And it's eh, it's really hard. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed. Now let's get back to the video. Time, so this is going to be Abel's soulmate, which it's Abel and Jackie Bright, which is female Jackie Bright. So it's basically Jack Jack Bright if he was born as a female physically, but she is also gender fluid and might have a male body at some point. Obviously Jack Bright has been gender fluid in canon and that is what we're going with. Anyways, let's do this. First of all, ja Jackie Bright is not canon to be physically female, but is gender fluid, yes. And Abel is not canon to be Yandere and is not canon to be shipped with Jackie or Jack Bright. It is fine to sh simp and ship for any fictional characters that you like and such, as long as you do not be gross or illegal about it and separate fiction from reality. Again, fiction from reality. This is fiction. It's not connected to the real character the real person that created the person. And we're not going to be like the real person who is disgusting and gross and illegal. Abel and Jackie are soulmates. It's not Alpha, Beta, and Omega World. Not in this one. I might do those later on because I have a few suggestions for those, but it's basically a soulmate universe where you know you have someone's soulmate when you physically touch them. And this is going to cause some issues with Jack and Abel. I mean, Jackie and able in this so let's get to oh yes and as the disclaimer goes fictional character fictional characters and fictional boundaries are not ideal partners to have in real life and something and you should not want them in real life but i can't stop you from what you want so you do you sex name muffins 
Jackie was walking in the hallway with the amulet, carrying it by hand. She looked at it. It was rather pretty, she thought to herself as she walks down the hall, only to have someone burst through the walls, and she gets forced back, a hand touching her throat. It was c covered by the scarf, so it wasn't a touch in her skin. She glared at the man. It was SCP-076-2, other known eyes as Abel. He did not waste a single second, and instead jabbed his sword into her chest. She coughs up and spits up blood, only for a second to touch his arm. He, His eyes widen and hers widen as well. They were soulmates. They could feel the connection instantly. And worst of all, Abel could feel her life slip away from him, that her, his soulmate was dying, and it was all his fault. He gave her a war of anger and went on a rampage. And Jackie bleed, bled out, holding the amulet close as her subconscious crept into the amulet, waiting to be picked up. It was a couple of days after, and Jackie was still in the ambulance. She was honestly freaking out and did not know what was going on. Suddenly, a female D-class picked her up and put her, and picked up the ambulance. And like that, it was like a switch. Jackie took over uh, the D-class's body and looked at herself. This was really fucking weird. She goes up to one of the doctors. And claims to be Jackie Bright. I'm Dr. Jackie Bright. And they looked at her confused. She started saying things that she shouldn't have known and as a D-class. But they had to test it. They took her to the office and asked what happened to her. The D-class wouldn't have saw the footage of what happened. So there was no way that they would have been able to see it. I was stabbed by SCP-076-2. Abel. She spat her. He fucking killed me. She did not tell them that they were soulmates. She did not need or want anyone to know that they were soulmates. Hopefully, Abel lost the connection in that she was no longer soulmates and it wasn't her soul he was attached to. Because she honestly never wanted to see him again. As the time went on, they realized that Jackie Bright was, in fact... In the ambulance, they ran tests, many, many tests, but what they were unaware of was that in the sarcophagus, Abel, or SCP-076-2, was feeling the connection to his soulmate. His eyes snapped open wide, and he realized his soulmate was alive, somehow. He did not realize how long he has been in there, not that it's been days and she should be dead, or shouldn't be or she was in a coma. He did not know. All he knew, he had to find her. And he will find her. He breaks out and instantly goes following the connection, hunting her down. Meanwhile, with Jackie, she is having some lunch, finally able to eat, and get odd looks from the other D-class. Of course, they knew her as a D-class in this body, but she scoffed. She was no, not a D-class. She was a scientist slash researcher here at the Foundation, and she knew she was now going places. She just didn't know where. She was no longer a junior researcher as they bumped her up to regular researcher, knowing that they could use her much longer and wanted to put her into good spaces to do that. Then the alarm went off. The alarm started blinking hot red and going around and around, showing off that there was a breach. She had a little bit of PTSD, remembering Abel, her soulmate, stabbing her in the chest, and she started to hyperventilate. She could not breathe. She could not get air. She could not think anything. She couldn't. She couldn't. She fell to the floor, shaken, and curled up into the fetal position. Her life flashing before her eyes once more. She couldn't do this. She couldn't do this. She couldn't do this. Suddenly, there are screams and people running. Abel was there, and he f could feel his soulmate's panic. Her, she was sobbing on the floor, clinging to herself, terrified of dying again. She felt him rush over to her and pick her up, holding him into her into his 
pulling her into his arms. He holds her close and whispers words of comfort in her ear. It is okay. I got you. He says, I will never hurt you again. He says, realizing that this was his soulmate, but she had somehow been in a different body. He could feel that this was the same researcher that he had stabbed, and that he realized that she was now mortal, that they were meant to be together, and that him stabbing her was fate, so they could always be together, together for all eternity. I am never letting you go, he says again, holding her close, and, Jack's, and Jackie shakes in horror, but also comfort. Their souls were connected already from the slightest touch, connecting them even though Abel died and her body was dead as well. They were connected by the soul, and there was nothing that could separate them, ever. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed this. It's a little shorter because I had to do a super long intro, and I hope that you all enjoyed. Yes, uh, Jackie Bright will begin a pregante in this, and she will be uh, pregante with Abel. Also, I will eventually do, do be doing a Yandere Can Kane X. Jackie Bright X Abel, Yandere Abel, and also be doing a, a Yandere Alto Clef X Jack Bright and a Clef Drake, Clef Drake or Drake Clef, something like that. Basically, Yander, mutual Yanderes, Clef and Yandere contracting Yandere for each other because those are requests off my Patreon. And that they are being moved up because they are obviously go first. Anyways, I hope that you all enjoyed. I will link the Valentine's Day video that was at the end of this and the playlist. So you can go check it out. See the full playlist. I hope you all enjoy and stay sexy. All my sexy muffins. But to remember the Patreon outro. Thank you, Gav and the Queen of the Tears. And thank you, Wicked Brony, the Witch of the Tears. You are both fabulous and i do this video you will obviously see it a few days before the tuesday it's supposed to be out because you get early access anyways i hope that you all enjoyed and stay sexy on my sexy muffins Bye bye